One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Here coming today with the fun old kid song Buffalo Gals in the key of A. I've got my capo on the second fret, fifth string tuned up to A. We're going to be thinking in the key of G but sounding like the key of A. This is a great one if you have kids, maybe they're learning the violin or the mandolin. It might be one of the first songs they learn. It's a very common fiddle tune, so it's a great one to learn. We're going to work on an A part and a B part, and what we're also going to work on for this lesson is how do I take that single note melody and make it sound like bluegrass? So I get this question a lot coming from both directions. A lot of times someone will know a single note melody and they can't make it sound like bluegrass or the opposite. They have a bluegrass soul and they can't determine what the melody is within that. So that's what we're going to focus on for this lesson. The most important concept I want you to remember is Scruggs style banjo is an approximation of the melody. So we're not just playing that single note melody and adding rolls around it like common misconception. We're fitting the melody into the Scrug style roll. So that's where comparing the single note melody to the Scrug style solo is so important. I'll also include a Scrug style tab with the actual melody notes highlighted so you can visually see where those are lining up within the rolls. I'll also do an easy backup lesson so how you add some licks and some basic rolls down the neck. All right, enough talking. Here's Buffalo Gals in the key of A. Here we go. too hard. We'll kind of take it like a couple measures at a time. So we're going to start with our pickup in measure one and we're going to play on beat four. So count one, two, three, and then we're going to play the open four string with our thumb. And then we're going to play a series of open strings, measure two. We're going to play the open third string twice, thumb of our right hand twice. And then the open second string, index finger. And then open first string, middle finger. Kind of just walking up the, the notes of a chord in G. Remember we got our capo on the second fret, so we're thinking in the key of G, but it's gonna sound like the key of A. I've also got my fifth string spiked up. Okay, so let's kind of just play that opening melody. Here we go, one, two, three. So just quarter notes, uh, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we play a little response lick, second fret on the first string. I'm gonna use either your first finger or second finger, it doesn't really matter, first finger is fine. So second fret, open, first string, and then back to the second string for a half note. So you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you're having trouble hearing the timing of that half note, play the open string twice as chord notes, and then just take out the second one. You can even kind of air strike the string, but just don't hit it, right? Okay. So that's what we're doing there. And then we play a little response phrase over a D chord. And we're going to play open first string, first finger, second, uh, first fret, second string, and then second fret, third string. Same timing. One, two, three, four. And then I actually just reach my middle finger right back up to that second fret on the first string and I play the exact same measure as measure three. And I just like using my second finger there because I'm kind of in this D7 chord. You could use like your third finger or your first finger, but I don't know, for me it just feels easiest to go. Like that. Okay, that's the first five measures. Let's play that. So we have one, two, three. I'll do it while counting and then I'll do it without counting. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
Good counting practice there. I'll do it without counting now. A little faster. One, two, three. Again, a little faster. One, two, three. If you get that part down, you've got like 50, over 50% of the melody down. Then measures six and seven are actually very similar to measures two and three. We start it the exact same way. And then right here, we actually play the second string twice. And then a little ending lick. Which is kind of similar to measure four, just a subtle variation. We have open first string twice, first fret, second string, Second fret, third string, open. Kind of going down like a D7 chord there. Okay, that's the A part to the song. Let's play the whole thing. Here we go. One, two, three. So you might hear this song with two A parts and two B parts, kind of more of a traditional fiddle tune style. I just did one A part and one B part, but you can easily repeat both parts if you want to. So if you want to repeat it, in measure nine, just play the, instead of playing a whole note, one, two, three, four, play one, two, three, and then start your pickup again. Right, so measure nine essentially would become measure one. Instead of having three beats of rest, you just have that open third string. One, two, three. So you can repeat the A part as many times as you want. I just did it once, but again, like I said, you might see it twice. So kind of just keep that in the back of your mind. So again, playing it as written, we, we pause in measure nine for a whole note. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to play a B part. Let me show you a simplified version first, and then I'll show you how I wrote it, just to spice it up a little bit. So the simple way would be kind of playing on the, the notes on the first string. We're going to play the, the fifth fret, then the fourth fret, then the second fret, and open. So kind of just walking down those notes. You could also do it with the open fifth string instead of this fifth fret. But I, I personally like keeping those notes on the same string. I think that helps you see the, the melody. Right? Rather than... Either way works though. So that's the basic melody. We're going to go... And then we actually go into our melody from the first part. So it's really just the, the first measure of it is different. So basically measure 10 is a substitute for measure 2. And then we go into measure 11, which is the same as measure 3. Measure 12 is the same as 4, right? And then 5 is the same as 13. Right? And then we play that same walk down. And then we play our same ending. So it's very common in fiddle tunes to have the A part, the ending from the A part and the B part be the same or very similar. That's something you can help keep in your back pocket. Okay, the ending for each part might be the same. That might be a spot to instantly try and memorize that. If you can nail the ending for both parts, you've got a big part of the song down. So it's, again, kind of keep that in your mind that the A part and B part a lot of times will have the same melody. So the only thing we're going to do is just spice it up with a little bit more notes just to kind of imply the lyrics a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to play that fifth fret and then we're going to bounce off the open fifth string. And then... And then right here, I put my middle finger on the third fret of the second string and I bounce off that note. So what I'm doing there is I'm just doubling up those notes to change the rhythm. Because the melody there is Buffalo Gals Won't You Come Out Tonight. So we're kind of implying that melody with that rhythm. And then... That just kind of gives it, again, it gets more accurate to the rhythm of the song. Which, again, is the more simple version. We're going to go like this. And then we repeat 
repeat that. Right, so that's an example of just adding notes around the melody, right? We're just playing the melody and we're just bouncing off open strings around it. And that, that note, we're bouncing is the same note if you're in tune. So same, same idea though. So you notice that doesn't really sound like Scrug style, right? We're just bouncing off. You can even bounce off all of them, right? It doesn't sound like Scrug style though because we're not really playing a role. We're just adding notes around the melody. show you in the second part how to, again, we're going to take that and make it a scrub style sound. All right, so that's the basic single note melody. Not too hard. I think you can get this with some practice. Obviously play it in phrases and then build it together. Add the next phrase on. Make sure you can play the whole thing before continuing on. All right, now let's look at how do we adapt that and make it sound like bluegrass. Let's break that down right now. 